Toyota Woolly TV, and this one's pretty exciting. This is the JS Zero. The JS Zero, I've been super lucky. They've got the PU for me, as well as the new Zero in the Hi-Fi 2.0. I'm a big fan straight up of the Monster Box. It's been one of my favorite boards to ride for many, many years. I slowly migrated from that over to the Monster uh, in the Easy Rider dims, and I had that in the Hi-Fi and in the PU, and, and that's straight up one of my favorite boards. This one is gonna be interesting because it's a mix of a multitude of models. So they've put in the Black Box Rocker, the Monster Box Rail and Concaves, and the monster outline. So it's got a combo of two out of my favorite boards and then the black box, which was a really good groveler. But this one is gonna be really different. It's a mesh of them. And I don't think I've had many boards that have come out of a stable like JS that are sort of a mix mash of three different models. Usually it's maybe one or two or a mix or an update of one. But this one is, is really a different board altogether. Picking it up and feeling it, it feels pretty similar to a monster box when you put it under your arm um, and you pick it up. It's, it feels similar to a monster box, but then it does have a different tail shape with a slight hip in it as well. These ones, because I've sort of come out of um, injury and I have put on a little bit of weight, I'm really happy that I ended up with the 6120 by 2 and 5 eighths, which comes in at 34.4 litres. So it's about a litre, litre and a half more than what I'd ridden in the Monster Box and also in the Monster Easy Rider. If you are looking at, um, at these boards, they don't feel big. Like when I pick it up and put it on my arm, the two and five eighths is, is hidden really well. That's the first thing that I notice with it. The other thing is it does feel quite flat. It, the nose looks pretty narrow compared to some of the boards I've been riding. And the tail is definitely a different shape to the Monster Box. There is no doubt about it. It is more pulled in and a different shape. I've got it in the Hi-Fi 2.0, which is pretty exciting too, because this one has got a whole range of updates on it compared to the last one. The main thing that I've seen in this is the carbon rod through the middle. It's still got the laid up of the glass that they had on the bottom. They've now put that meshed um, polypropylene weave through the top of the board as well as the bottom and the carbon in the deck as well. So it's definitely going to be stiffer and uh, I reckon it's going to have a totally different response to the old hi-fi. Best I get in the water. Thanks JS for hooking us up with these two. I'm going to go surfing. I'm frothing. It's so nice to be back in the water. So I'll see you guys back real soon.
Okay, we're back, and I can tell you straight up, this board did not disappoint. I ended up riding the Hi-Fi more because I had more opportunities to surf shittier waves on it, and I wanted the spring and the, the way the EPS generates speed. What you'll see is I've had a bunch of surfs on the Hi-Fi. There's only a couple little clips on the PU, but I will give that more of a go, and I know that that will have a spot in my quiver. But let's concentrate on the Hi-Fi for now. The differences um, with the construction and the fins I've used. So I always try and use very stiff fins when I'm using epoxy boards similar to the construction of the Hi-Fi. I find that they respond a lot better with a nice stiff fin. These ones are just the air core in the medium performers. So just a really stock standard template. You'll see that they worked really well on the board and um, what you'll notice is with the Hi-Fi compared to the PU, if the waves have got no power and you're having to pump and generate speed, compress and extend through, through pumping and generating that out of your own steam and your own legs and body, then the Hi-Fi is usually the board to, to go for. If you're surfing waves where you don't have to generate your own speed, then I think you're better off on a PU. That's how I mainly to, like separate them when I'm trying to go, which one do I use? Which one do I use when I'm paddling out? And I'm gonna to mention too, I got to use the Hi-Fi in a comp. I went back to the state titles and uh, and got to ride this and you'll see that footage. It's a bit shaky, my, uh, my son filmed it for me. I got a three waves in the final on it and you'll see it really performing quite a flat little right hander. The main differences now from the actual shape of the board to the older models, to the black box, to the monster box and to the monster. The biggest thing I found, it grovels like a black box. It's as easy to ride as a monster box, but the best thing is it turns in the pocket like the monster. The way they've used the outline allows the board to get way tighter in the pocket than it ever did with the black box or with the monster box. So it's got all the goodness of those Boards that are easy to ride and great fun and work in a lot of conditions, but when you do get it right in the pocket, the thing lights up just like a monster does. So even an old bloke like me can get the tail, get on the tail and jam a really tight turn straight into the pocket of the wave and it holds like the, like the monster does. So the guys at JS have done such a great job of meshing those boards together and creating something that just flies. In the futures, I played around with some E in the black sticks in the smaller day and I also put in um, just a set of neutrals in a medium as well which is a simpler template to this one. So thanks again JS, thanks you guys all for watching, really appreciate it. Thanks to Creatures for the tail pads, keep buffing me out with those which is also greatly appreciated and please subscribe, stay tuned, hit me up via Instagram or on the YouTube channel and I'll try and get back to you as quick as I can. Thanks for watching. You.